Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, more wine that I've had before, at least uh, from this particular winery or this, this line of wines. Um, I reviewed uh, the prior vintage. So this is, uh, what, the 16s? So I reviewed the 15s uh, actually just a few months ago in October of last year, uh, to October 2016. Uh, then I drank the rosé... Um, like a week ago, which would at this point, uh, a week ago was actually the 6th of July. Uh, it had been Corvin for nine months. It held up well, but a bit tart and acidic. Not as fresh as I expected. Um, but it was a rosé and it was Corvin. And I mean, it was in my, it was in the, the little thing over here, the, the cooler. So it wasn't sitting out uh, in room temperature. So it was kept, kept properly, let's put it that way. Um, so let's kind of talk about the the brand here for a second. So I don't know how much uh, of history I gave last time, and I think it's only the second time I've ever had the wine. Um, so a gentleman by the name of Jean Orens Ferretin um, was a uh, winemaker, and he was a son of a winemaker. And uh, I guess he arrived in the Rhone Valley, or was or was in the Rhone Valley. And it just, it's really hard. I mean, they're being really creative and artsy fartsy with this stuff. But, you know, at, at the origin, one man, Jean Oriens Ferraton, vigneron, and son of a vigneron, a region baked in the sun, the Rhone Valley. It was 1946, the story begins. I don't know what you mean. I mean do, do you mean he, he founded the winery in 1946 and he was a winemaker somewhere else? And he, you know, I don't know. I mean, the war was over. So, you know, I don't know what was going on. Michel, his son, inherited the same passion. He decided to give a new dimension to his father's vineyards. The first Hermitage, Crow's Hermitage, and son Joseph uh, Ferritin were brought into the world. Of course, again, we don't have timeline. Um, a close friend of the Ferritins, Michel Chapoutier. Yay! I like that guy. I should, you know, if I ever get to the Rhone Valley, I assume he's still alive. He's been around for a while. Um, or at least, you know, whoever's running the winery, um, uh, brought it. Well, yeah, he's 1998. I'm sure he's still alive. Um, brought his know-how in 1998. The vineyards were converted to organic viticulture, then certified before embracing the culture of biodynamics. Okay. So organic and biodynamics are different things technically, but I think I know where they're going with this. Uh, an audacious step for innovative and strong perspectives. Um, and then... Uh, then it just says, honestly, it doesn't really say much as far as like current is a bunch of just, it just says, a, it just says the, the, the people who, who run it are just have a commitment to, to the land and the wine and all that. And when you look at the current group of guys, um, none of them have the last name of Ferritin. So I don't know if the Ferritin family still owns the winery and then these guys just run the winery. Um, so very, very hard to kind of, at least from my perspective, to get a lot of information. Again, a lot of marketing fluff. All right, so um, let's just get right into it. So this is the 2016 Ferritin Pair et Phil, so that's father and son, if I remember correctly. Coach de Rhone, uh, Samarens, uh, white wine um you know what it was a sample and i don't I'll, I'll put on the lower third how much it is it's a sample i don't remember where i got it from i don't have any paperwork on it i probably have paperwork but in the past couple months i just things have just been kind of a craziness at the house and i probably lost the actual um stuff on it because this is for the last wine i'm reviewing today um 
so I don't know how much it was and yeah the the website won't tell me I mean my website for reviewing it won't say how much it was let's see if I can just kind of get a get a ballpark figure from uh, let's see the wine curmudgeon how about him he probably will have a, a price point 13 bucks there you go and I think I had to do the same thing last time I had to go looking all this stuff up to find find a uh, a price point. So around thirteen bucks for the white. Uh, I'm sure the rosé is around the same amount of money. All right, so uh, it is white Grenache, a sixty percent, and claret, which is forty percent of the blend. Um, they say the soil is essentially clay and limestone. Um, they say after pressing, the must is cold settled for forty eight hours. Whoa, yeah. For a second, I thought it was a screw cap. Anyway, um, that would have been fun. Uh, fermentation, temperature are controlled. Well, of course they are. Um, it is uh, matured in vats without malolactic, so they don't allow the mallow to go through. Um, and then they bottle, or it says early bottling at the end of winter. So check this out. So Grenache and Claret. Bam. Of course, lots of bubbles because I just used put gas in all this. Lots of debate as to whether the argon is affecting the aroma and flavor. For the most part, I don't feel like I've tasted anything weird out of a Corvin, but there's always been that one out of like, I don't know, 50 or 100 wines. I'm like, wait a minute, I taste something a little off. I like the nose. Kind of floral, honestly. Floral peach, peach, uh, you know, white flower, maybe peach blossom. Um, yeah, very peachy. Almost peachy keen. White peach, really, more than anything else. Like a peach tea, except without the tea, right? So like the, the peach syrup that you put in, in, in a peach tea. That's really the over, overwhelming aroma on it and, and white floral and not much else. Let's try it. The back label produce said the same thing as the website. Um, it's tasty. Um, while it's probably technically a dry wine, there, there seems to be a touch of sweetness to it. Um, probably more apparent sweetness or not true actual sweetness. It may not be quite off dry. Um, it's not bone dry, that's for sure. Um, but the, the fruit is still coming through. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it tart, um, but it's definitely, uh, it's still kind of fresh and peachy and... You know, kind of tasty, actually. Get a little extra chill on this. Probably be super refreshing. With that said, it's, I don't like to use the word one dimensional, but it's pretty much like a, like it's right there, man. It's just like, peachy-ish wine. At least that's that's the flavor I get a lot. What do they have on here? White fruit, white flowers, white fruit. Palette just says nicely balanced wine. Doesn't really kind of give you much. Yeah, doesn't really give you much on that. But, you know, I said white peach. So, I mean, it's definitely a very refreshing and tasty wine. If it's around 13-ish dollars, again, the, the lower third should have uh, should have the price point on it. Um, it's still a good wine. I, I, I absolutely. All 
I'd buy it. All right, let's move on to wine number two. Bam. Do, do, do. Just move it along, move it along. There is something to see here. All right, so this is the, um, again, 2016. Uh, this is the Rosé. Let me go pull this up from the website real quick. Boom, there you go. Label. Zivines. Boom. All right. Uh, it is 75% Grenache. Uh, and then it just says Syrah and Cinso. So the other 25% are those two grapes. Um, it says cold settle for 24 hours. Fermentation lasts for 15 days at a temperature between 15 and 19 degrees centigrade. Uh, in vats, maturing. Uh, that's really about it. All right. So let's take a gander at this. Very pretty pink-ish color. There's a almost a bread donuts glazed donut component. I'm not used to getting that. Um, maybe we're talking Lee's contact here or something. It's possible if it's aged in if it's aged in a vat. You know they may be doing Lee's stirring on it. Uh, but I do get a little bit of watermelon. Uh, I saw the word raspberry real quick. I, I kind of get that. I also get a touch of red apple on it. White flowers. I mean, it's a very pretty nose. Let's uh, check it out. Definitely a dry wine. Um, unlike the uh, the uh, white wine, I don't really get that apparent sweetness off of it. Um, the the fruit is tart. Um, I don't know how you have tart watermelon, but you know, kind of a tart watermelon. Um, yeah, the raspberry, maybe a little bit cranberry. Um, red apple is still there. Um, decent acid on the wine. Like my mouth is really watering, so I would call this at least medium plus in the acid. Oh, at least medium plus on the acid. Um, it's a tasty wine. I like it. Again, if it's probably around $13, get a little chill on it. Um, but it's super refreshing. Um, going back to having this wine nine months later, yes, um, this is definitely not as tart and acidic. Um, so this is um, definitely a wine that I probably shouldn't let sit, uh, even if it is in a cooler for nine months. Uh, I probably should be chugging this here within the next couple of weeks just so I can keep that freshness. I know it's Corvin, but still, um, it's, it probably needs to be drank pretty quickly. Uh, it's good wine. Look at that, 13 minutes. Outstanding. All right, so um, either wine I think is a great buy. Uh, the 16 Vintage is showing well. Um, yeah, if you find it in your local wine shop or grocery store or wherever uh, you buy your fine wines. Um, for $13-ish, might be 10, might be 15, who knows? Um, definitely uh, definitely uh, try it, it's good stuff, man. It's not your typical, you know, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, blah, 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 right? Which is what I actually gravitate towards when I want to drink wine. All right, uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. Again, thank you once again for uh, stopping by. I click the links above to find me up to click the link over there to send me some money via PayPal uh, so I can go to Burgundy. Um, I'm going to be hounding you guys about Burgundy every week. And then um, click the link below uh, for more information about these guys. Um, and you can look up all their wines that they do. Uh, I really like to try some of their other stuff. I guarantee I probably had some of their other stuff. 
but I would like to try some of their Hermitage and Crows and Sundra stuff and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Hint, hint to whoever sent this to me. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for stopping by, and we'll see everyone again next time.